guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. So today I am canning chicken broth or chicken stock. This is more like a bone broth. Can you see how gelatinous that is? This is sat in the fridge overnight. I cooked it for about 14 hours and then put, let it cool down all the way and put it in the refrigerator. I've taken a lot of the fat off. There's still a lot of chicken and bones in here. And I actually use chicken feet as well as chicken thighs and chicken legs, skin, bones, all of it. And then the carcass from a couple rotisserie chickens. So this is a really rich broth. Um, there's bay leaf in there and garlic, and that's it. I didn't put carrots and celery in and all the other stuff. I just wanted really pure chicken stock. So that being said, I'm excited. Although, because it is so gelatinous, that's not liquid, that's like jello. I'm gonna put it on the stove and get it warm through, get the chicken out and all those parts out so I can uh, discard that for the dogs and um, get down to the real broth that I will strain twice through a sieve and a um, cheesecloth and then we'll get that jarred up and we're gonna be uh, canning this with four jars lids, of course. I'm doing it in quarts because Typically, I use a quart of stock at a time, and we're let's just do this. It's super easy. Couldn't be easier, and I'm using the instructions um, from the uh, National Center for Home Food Preservation, and for quart jars, we'll be canning for 25 minutes once the canner has come up to pressure. Okay, and I have my All-American uh, 921 on the stove with three inches of water and a little bit, maybe a tablespoon of um, vinegar just to keep the uh, sediment from the water to collect on the jars. All right, let's 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 get to like straining this off. Okay, so now that this is warmed up a little bit and we've got liquid, I pulled some of the skins from the thighs that were like whole pieces of skin and put them in the air fryer for cracklings for salad later. Delicious, a little salt. If you've never done that, it's amazing. So I'm taking out of the solid, or as much of the solids here that I can. And you'll see collagen rich chicken feet in here, chicken legs, there's a chicken foot. <laughs> but if you've never used them in stock, it makes the best gelatinous stock. It's so good. I'm gonna separate all this in the meat and the cartilage, all that stuff will go for the for the dogs. You could give that to your chickens if you wanted to. If you have chickens, you could you could do a multitude of things. I'm hoping I get seven quarts, but I don't I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna get I might. I'm I might. There's a lot in here. So I'm gonna fill this five quart pan with clean stock and then we'll see where we're at. If that makes sense. Okay, so. I don't know that you need to come along for all the boning of how particular I get, but even those chicken feet have a lot of collagen and connective tissue that's really good for the dogs as well. So I don't want to waste any of it. It all costs money, right? So any of the solids that are in here at this point will get strained out. And there's some more bay leaves. Little bones. Get all this stuff out of there. I think I've got all the bones out. Okay, plan B. Let's get over to the counter and I'll show you how picky I'm going to be with this while this heats up. And oh my goodness. And then I do, I do want to taste it. So if you want salt free, that's that's totally up to you. Um, if you want a little bit of salt in it for flavor, then again, that's that's your call. It's your kitchen. It's pretty concentrated. 
Mm, so good though. And I am going to run it, even though I skimmed a lot of the fat off, I'm going to run it through the defatting process. I have a defatter. I guess that's what you call it. Is it a defatter or? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so this is, I'm going to put all the bones into one container, all the meat, the cartilage, and <laughs> you got to be careful. These have little bones in them. I'm not going to, I don't want that for the dogs, but get you know that cartilage out of there and the skin they can have that that's really good for them their coat all of it so I'm not gonna go crazy but I am gonna get as much of it because I paid for all of it I want to use it all and then that's what I'm doing I'm, I'm picking chicken <laughs> And see, that's all cartilage and connective tissue. That's really, really good for them in one bone. You do want to be careful, those little bones. So that's what I'll be doing while the broth is heating up. And then we'll come back and <laughs> you'll get to watch the rest of the process. Super easy. Get your ball canning book out and look at chicken stock. Okay, so the dogs will have... Uh, two containers of boned chicken. So this is the cartilage, the chicken skin, the meat, everything, two different containers. And they'll have that. We give them a spoonful of chicken, well, in the morning and at the night, about 12 hours apart. And then they always have a little bit of kibble there. So in the freezer it goes and back to the stock. I'm gonna start defatting and straining that off through cheesecloth and through four jars has not just their um, wide and narrow mouth funnels, but they've got a sieve that fits right on there. It's going right in the jar. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. Before we get started on defatting and clearing up the stock, I, I did put my jars, they're about half to three quarters of the way full of water into my canner and I'm getting I'm bringing my canner up to temperature so I want those jars to be tempered and hot when I put hot broth in there so you know, uh, yeah you kind of got to do that just one more tip and use your canner or if you have a water bath canner or steamer to get your jars hot all right or the dishwasher or a sink of hot water whichever you like okay so the first thing we're gonna do is defat this and so I've got my if you've got one of these, it, it just, it really is invaluable. I don't mind a little bit of fat in my stock because um, it is more flavor. I just don't want a huge amount. I don't think I'll have a lot because I already took it off the top. There was about a half a cup of fat on the top there. So I get it into the deep batter and nice hot stock. And I'm, I want this really clear, so I don't really see a lot of fat. We're gonna strain this through cheesecloth and a fine mesh strainer. Because there's a lot of sediment in there. I do not see a lot of fat though. So maybe we'll just leave what, what little bit of fat's there to collect on the cheesecloth. Cause see there's not, I don't see any in here. We might have got most of it. So let's let's just keep doing that. And then it's gonna have one more strain into the jars, into the hot jars, but gotta wait till the jars get hot. And the canner's ready to go. And this is about a quart for each of these containers. So I'll be able to kind of get a count on about what I've got, hopefully. Okay, let's do it. And there we go. We're just not gonna worry about any of that left, the fat that's left. There won't be that much to worry about. And if you've ever opened a, like a can of chicken stock, there's always a little chunk of fat in there. It's just extra flavor. And this is just to really pick up the uh, bits that are left behind. So that's at least two quarts right there. 
with that. And onward we go. So when's the last time you canned chicken stock? If you've ever canned it, leave us a comment in the comment section below so we can and share your experience. Was it a good experience? Did you love that? Did you love having it on the shelf? I absolutely love having my own things that I prepared on the shelf. I know what's in it. I know that this is full of collagen rich um, ingredients that I may not get from a box stock from the grocery store. So I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing and then when I'm, when I'm pouring it into the jars through another clean piece of cheesecloth and the four jar strainer, I'm gonna show you what this broth looks like. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, there's a foot. <laughs> ah, I missed one. <laughs> okay, here we go, it's hot, be careful. <laughs> okay, so a clean piece of cheesecloth, stock that I've strained already. The pot's full, and this is just coming straight straight into the jar. Any any bigger pieces that the cheesecloth might catch will just happen right now. And the rest of the story is beautiful. I might even put another layer of cheesecloth, but for now, you can do paper toweling, you can do a... Um, just about anything you wanted. All right, so we've got, <laughs> we want an inch of headspace for this. I may have a little bit too much, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's see. So four jars, lids, this regular mouth, yeah, it's too full. So the regular mouth will tell you on the side, and I did not pay attention, so gosh darn it. We made a mess already. Okay, <laughs> mess cleaned up. Just kept on pouring, thinking, well, it's just a quart, but obviously it's a little more. So I'm really wiping this rim because it overflowed around the edges. These jars will get washed tomorrow after everything settles down, but you want an inch of headspace. If you're not sure whether you've got an inch of headspace or not, you can look at four jars. Um, the what I was trying to tell you is this has a step down, so that bottom is just barely. That's barely. If that touches your liquid at the bottom there, that is enough. That is one inch, and it goes up in quarter inch in increments, and that's just perfect. And then this tool here, it's just touching the broth. So these are also quarter of an inch increments. So I'll wipe that rim really good. Let's wet another dry corner here. We don't want anything to impede our seal. Grab yourself a magnetic wand. And we'll get our four jars lid on. Center that on your jar. Get your ring on, and these should go on easily, and just finger tight till you've got a little bit of a resistance. And these are hot, so be careful. Isn't that beautiful though? Gorgeous chicken stock. Okay, let's rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. And I'll get another jar out of the canner. While it's sitting there. And I've got the canner sitting on low now. It's, a, it's about 180, a little higher maybe, 180 degrees. So Now we've got our four measurements. We're gonna watch really close this time. How about that? And I love that they have a strainer with this, um, just for this reason, for the stocks that we do. Just get one more strain before you jar it up. I if I have to guess, I'm gonna get six quarts, but I'm, I would love to get seven, but six is better than nothing. 
Okay, we're approaching that one inch head space. And as soon as, yep, okay, as soon as it touches the bottom of the four jars, um, little step down here, we're good to go. The jars do not have to be sterilized, just sanitized in your dishwasher because they're gonna can for long enough that process gets sterilized in the canning process itself. So, especially during a pressure canning. Okay, a little bit of resistance and in the canner she goes. <laughs> okay. And now because I'm out of regular mouse, I've got to switch over to a wide mouth lid and jar because I'm out of regular mouth jars available to me in my pantry. So I prefer to have all my stocks and juices and everything in a regular mouth. I actually prefer regular mouth jars because of the looks, but that's just me. And this stock's pretty concentrated when you add it to soup or stew, you're probably gonna be able to get away with adding a little bit of extra water. And now I'm gonna switch over to the wide mouth funnel. I'm gonna put the this so I can see it and we'll get our strainer over there. And we're done with this funnel. Now, and wipe that lid, the lip of that jar off. Really, really good. And I'm excited about this. So if you think about this, this is probably only a couple of pots of soup and then you're, you're up for canning again. So save your chicken carcasses and it doesn't take much to make a beautiful stock. All right, we'll be back when I got them all in the can. Okay, so right down to within two tablespoons of seven quarts. And I just topped it off with some purified water for that last quart. So I got seven quarts in the canner, ready to go. Hot canner, about 180 degrees. Um, and the All-American, you put the thumb screws on opposite sides and, and you're just going to lightly tighten them and then opposite again, you have to open them up and that levels off the lid from one side to another. It's obviously tipped a little bit because this side is... And then this side. Okay, and get these tightened. And then you're going to tighten opposites. Really tight. And all the way around. Okay, so now I've got my dial gauge facing me. I've got the petcock here. We're gonna get this up to steam. I put it on medium heat. I'm not in a hurry for this to, if you get in a hurry, you end up with siphoning and everything else. So I bring it up pretty slowly to temperature. Once it starts venting a steady stream of steam and it's shooting out of there like nobody's business, we're gonna put the timer on for 10 minutes. Once that 10 minutes is up, I will put the weight on and that is a 10 pound weight for my altitude. So you wanna be sure and check your altitude because that is gonna factor how much weight you need and pressure in the canner. This will get up to 240 degrees and that's the temperature we need to kill botulism. So as soon as we're venting, I'll be back to okay, show you. guys, so this is steaming, a steady stream of steam. It's hot, I keep, make sure it's pointed away from your cabinets and your microwave. If you're directly under your cabinet or your microwave, point that out this way. Um, mine is away from it, but so it's, it's getting all the temperature within the canner all together and get me any cold spots out of there. Um, and then we're, once the 10 minutes is up and I've got the timer going already, once that 10 minutes is up, we're gonna put the weight on. And again, it's 10 pounds for my altitude. 
and you want to check your altitude because it may vary. When I was in Nevada, it was 15 pound weight because of the high altitude. So, okay, we're just gonna wait and I'm super excited. I've got seven quarts of stock to go on the shelf. What a good feeling that is. I don't know if you can at all, but if you do, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, if you haven't jumped into canning at home yet, well, number one, you should, don't be scared. And as long as you follow safety guidelines and don't, you know, listen to um, channels that talk about the Amish did it this way, the, everything gets updated. Just because we didn't used to wear seat belts doesn't mean we don't wear them now. So that's my uh, thought on the whole thing. It's not worth the risk. So, okay. so. Happy canning, girls and, and guys. I just watched a video of some uh, gentleman canning chicken stock. All right, we'll be back. When we're taking them out of the canner. They're gonna go for 25 minutes. Don't forget, cause they're quartz. Hey guys, this is the end. Now, the canner went for 25 minutes uh, at 10 pounds of pressure. That means that 10 pound weight was able to rock. It's 11 pounds on the dial gauge to, to actually make that move and so when it came down, I turned, when the timer went off, I turned the stove off and let it just sit here and come down naturally. When I could pull this weight off without it hissing at me more than a then I pulled it off. I, I, I'm super patient because I don't want any siphoning. So if you rush this process, you will have siphoning because your jars have not sealed or created that vacuum yet. They're still expanded and they will, it, they'll not only evacuate some of the contents, but sometimes it evaporates. So I am very patient. Then I put the lid on like this. It's been like that for about 15, 20 minutes, just like this. And there's no more steam immediately coming out of this can. Now it's still extremely hot. I can feel the heat, but I don't have steam, right? So that's the way I do it. Um, everybody might do it a little bit different. And remember, this is expanded, so, but your inch of headspace is right down there. So it's expanded a little bit and you can see it boiling in the jars. And with broth, sometimes you'll hear it pop and suck the lid up and down. So before it seals completely, that's, that's, it's very typical. This one's really boiling. This guy here is boiling, the lids are loose, but we leave it alone. These are going to set, that lid is just to hold that flat on in place. It's not to do anything else. It's just to hold your flat in place. So if you think of it that way as a tool, an extra tool for you, you'll, um, you'll be less stressed about it. And if you, if you were to crank those lids down before you canned it, you could have a jar buckle. Now, I've never personally had a jar buckle, but um, I've seen people on YouTube that have, and I've seen pictures on Facebook, and yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a waste of product, number one. And I don't tip my jars either, because if they're not sealed yet, these all look like they are though, Honestly, there's no more dimples. These are four jars has a little dimple. So yeah, they're all this, they've all already sealed. So these lids be or rings being loose, it's not a big deal. There's a little bit of sediment on a couple of these at the bottom, but that's normal. That's even normal when you buy a carton of chicken stock or you have a can, it's at the bottom. That's just part of the beast. You don't see it in those items because you can't see through the carton or, or the, um, if we got our chicken stock in jars, we'd see that and we'd be used to it. So don't, don't worry about that. These are going to sit here until tomorrow. And then I will take the rings off. I will wash the jars. I will label them chicken stock and the month and year that have canned it. It never lasts very long, but it's it's so comforting to know I have seven quarts and I just bought a case of chicken stock from Costco too. So I'm pretty set for a little bit. Now, coming up soon, I'll be canning more in bulk, bigger bulk, 
than I'm doing now. So stay tuned for that. I hope this inspires you to can your own chicken broth. Don't forget to go down below. I've got a link to four jars. You can get 10% off your complete order. You can get an anti-fatigue match. You can get a jar opener. They've got beautiful kitchen towels that are fun. And they're, and they're top quality. Um, there's a timer. They've got all kinds of stuff now. And they actually have, and I have their canner. So I will be able to do two canners at once. Um, they also have a pressure canner out. So go check it out. And everything is very competitively priced and the best that canning jar lids have to offer. <laughs> Customer service is amazing. So use that coupon code and you'll get 10% off no matter what you buy. All right, guys, I hope it inspires you to can your own chicken stock. And if you have any questions or there's something you'd like to see me can in the future, leave me a comment and let me know. And I hope you subscribe if you like this sort of stuff. All right, guys, bye. So guys, I hope it inspires you. Now there's one jar missing because I made some soup. And yes, I used some home canned chicken stock. So delicious.